This podcast is rated E for explicit. I first spoke to Denzel a few weeks ago in the episode titled The Plight of the Pansexual. Now, this is the sequel where we talked about... I love humans. I love all of us, but I just know that we're jackasses. Right. And it makes me angry sometimes. Oh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and you know, it, like internal anger too. It's like angry with yourself. It's like, why are you like this? <laughs> so let's get started. You met me in the midst of many things. Shedding skin, sprouting wings, looking at life as a spiritual being. Through a human lens, having conversations with God about so many things. This show is your invitation. The poet God is the conversation. People have different things that they do sexually. Mm. So everybody isn't into intercourse. Like you could be, you could be bisexual and not um, necessarily have intercourse with the same sex. Yeah, Correct? it's um, yeah, it's like you know, you can be whatever you are, bisexual, straight, gay, whatever, whatever you choose to love yourself, and like you cannot have like a stronger preference towards women, stronger preference towards men, right? Whatever. Like, and I be- know that like I still have like a stronger leaning towards feminine and identifying people or like women in general. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Now, do you think that you could ever be in a uh, um, relationship with a guy in the future, maybe? Okay. Mm-hmm. But right now, as of right now, like, you know, I'm, first of all, way too scared. And um, it's not their fault. I'm just scared in general. Okay. Well, I mean, but, um, outside of the fear of all of what it can come with, I just mean from your soul. You know, what does that feel like to you? Um, it, it's like, hey, getting to know, like, a really nice guy and everything and, like, realizing, yo, I'm really attracted to you, but, like, I'm also kind of afraid what's going to happen so i'm not going to express that or i'm not going to go past a certain line i see what you're saying and we're going to be really good friends and i'm going to show you how much i love you that way (laughs) (laughs) oh gosh you know it's the things that we have to deal with right Mm -hmm. um so okay the other term in in addition to pansexuality that you want to that we want to talk about is polyamory Poly- polyamory. Polyamory, yes. Polyamory. Let's let's talk about that. All right. So polyamory is like you know it's similar to polygamy, except it's not just the man that can have multiple relationships, and it's just a relationship of you know trust and love between you know more than two or three people. Mm-hmm. And that's so really all it is. Huh. Have you seen uh, Since Eight? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of love. I'm still in, watching season two right now. <laughs> there's a lot of love in going on in a lot of. <laughs> uh, and since eight, uh, mm-hmm. it's a, it's an awesome, awesome series on Netflix. If you if you haven't um, seen it, but there's a lot of sexuality mm-hmm. and it's crossing all kinds of lines, like everywhere. Like, is there a line that they have not gone across? I don't. Um, you know, <laughs> have they had sex with animals yet. If no, they haven't gone. Th- there's their line, <laughs> <laughs> but there are there are relationships with men and women, women and women, uh, everything. It's mm-hmm. like and they're, they're all intersecting, and and it's it's kind of it sounds it's like beautiful, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and the way they film it and capture it, capture it and tell that story is beautiful, mm-hmm. and um, it sounds uh, it reminds me similar to how you're describing polyamory. And and also it sounds That's a, a little pretty, bit. You no, know, that, that that show, like I, I watched it, and like I'm watching season two right now. That show is a pretty good example. I'm not saying it's like the definitive example, of right? Like, it's kind of what polyamory and like pansexuality looks like, because yeah, th- what they do, right? That's what happens. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now that I think family. about it, yeah, it's like everybody. There's no boundaries. Like people show up. People show up. Uh, you know, everybody's connected, mm-hmm. which is what since eight 
is all about, right? Yeah. And then, you know, we, we are intertwined and connected to each other on a spiritual level. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so a lot of people don't, they think about sex when they, when they talk about sexuality, but they don't think about the, the spiritual, spiritual aspect. The spiritual, the emotional. Yeah. The, all and that so stuff. they're connected. And, and, I, and I love how they also tell that spiritual story. And since it, cause you, you kind of get the, the, all of it, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and the way that, that, that we are inspired, um, by each other mm-hmm. and, and, and how we kind of co-create our, um, realities in the way that they do without, as they show in that show, without any kind of boundaries. It's like we show up and I'm just kind of, you know, our energies kind of marry each other. And we go with what where that kind of takes us, mm-hmm. uh, the journey that that takes us on, and um, we learn from that on that journey together, and we kind of discover different parts of ourselves that we did not know. Because you know, I like I, I like to describe myself as a spiritual being, as I do in the um, the opening of every episode of this this show, a spiritual being having a, a human experience, and I think. That show kind of really, you know, is on that level. Yeah, um, I feel like that reigns true for a lot of us. We are spiritual beings mm-hmm. having a very human experience. We're having a very human experience, for better or for worse. Um, and so I, I try to live my life um, like that and, and, not, and not allow people to to make this human part so heavy. I'm working um, on that. And so there's a certain amount of... of, of um, freedom that I, I realize now at this stage of my life that I have to give myself in order for my spiritual journey to go where I need it to go. And so I just can't give certain things to people anymore. I just can't give certain things away anymore. And I think I used to do a lot of that. I used to give people uh, uh, authority and precedence in areas of my life where they should have, they've, they've never even begun to earn it, but I gave it away. And now I'm, I'm, now I'm taking it back. Mm. And um, and and uh, that's what a lot of these conversations that I want to have with people like you um, are going to be about um, what we've given, uh, what we've given away, and what we need to to kind of take ownership of again in order just to be, you know, and and as simple as that sounds, in order just to be, uh, and and to get to a place of wholeness. And you can't be whole if you've given all of these parts of yourself away. Coming up, I talked to Denzel about the layered complexity of being black and being a member of the LGBTQ community. We'll be right back after these messages. I am so excited to be a part of the wonderful world of podcasts and to celebrate I'm giving away a copy of my book, Lies I Never Quite Believed, which averages five stars on Amazon and iBooks. Now, a drawing will be held after each episode of season one. All you have to do to enter is subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on whatever platform you happen to be listening on. And then send me a screenshot at poetgodmail.com at gmail.com that's poetgodmail at gmail.com this giveaway is only eligible for listeners living in the United States of America being black (laughs) <laughs> being black being black um, in itself is is its own so take the um, <laughs> you take all that part where no, like nobody likes you at all and right that that vilify that metro and you just up it up a couple of more notches because mm-hmm. not only does nobody else like you your own community don't like you right and doesn't want to understand you you know, right. and the, the own black community doesn't even like want to like or try to understand it because there, we are um, we tend to be stuck in our ways and we're all quite stubborn. People. Mm-hmm. We're quite a stubborn people, so when we, we stuck in our ways, we stuck in our ways for a good minute. Okay, so, so tell me this: um, Do you think, as a black man 
with all of these emerging uh, things and these this this wonderful person that you're growing into, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is it easier for you? Do you think to have relationships and in a way that you want to have an experience them with somebody who's not black, who um, doesn't have as much uh, uh, concerns about what society may think uh, because of being, uh, you know, that's complex. Mm-hmm. Because just the same thing that you you said earlier about, you know, why you might not be able to have a whole relationship with another guy because of all those things may it be might it be easier for you if that other guy or if that other girl was white if she was you know european or whatever uh, and she didn't have those issues that tend to come with being black that's yeah. rough um i don't think love is either easy like either way mm-hmm. but i do know that you know another person that i was um recently talking to um we uh she knew about me and everything she was black but um, our um, paths just, I guess, didn't really align. Mm-hmm. And i um, kind of going through that right now. Mm. So so w- what do you think uh, didn't, didn't align? Uh, it's just a lot of personal growth that has to happen, especially okay. on my own part. But, um, but yeah, and then, yeah, I don't think it's, it's going to be easy mm-hmm. either way because you still have to go home. And if you let in a relationship long enough with that person, you're going to have to take them home. Mm. And we all know how we are about interracial dating. So. Oh, wow. So you think um, your your parents would have an issue? I mean, issue with what? With you bring, what, 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 what uh, background was she? Um, yeah, she was, she was black. She, she was, was black. black. Yeah, but... she was black. She was, um, okay. I think she was like. What's that? Ethiopian, I believe. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. So you think um, your uh, parents wouldn't be accepting? Oh, no. They would have loved her. Okay. She's black. Okay. So. But sh- her parents wouldn't have accepted you? I mean, I'm a nice and kind of person. You can accept me until I come out. So. Okay. You know, I'm still wearing a mask, man. Right. Oh, so you're saying that she wouldn't have, ex- or they might not have accepted your they accept part of me. Part of you. They accept the other part of me. Right. Who knows? Right. 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 But, um, right. You know, but it's always difficult bring home someone that's like outside your race or anything. In my opinion, like mm-hmm. I've always had difficulty doing that. Hmm. Like anyone outside your race is like always come question like, are they white or black? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, but I think we deal with that at home and outside. Oh, yeah, definitely. We definitely deal with it outside and everything. Yeah. I don't really care about the outside, though. The outside, those opinions don't even matter. Those opinions might not even hurt you. Mm-hmm. Depends on who you are. But, like, with, you know, opinions that hurt me are the ones that are really close to home. Right. Those are the ones that always touch, like, little places closer to your heart. Of course. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I know. I mm-hmm. know. Um, and that's why I had to kill that part of my heart. Oh, man. <laughs> man. Kudos to you. That's no, rough. because, you know, I got to a place in life where it was either me or it was them. Man, I wish I had your yeah. courage and wish me luck in the future, man. There is a point in life where you there is no... It's either left or right. Mm-hmm. Really and truly. That's, and, and you know what? I like to... One of the things that we have in common is that we both deal with depression yeah and one of the uh, i like to say that depression has given me many many gifts and one of the things that it has given me is it's forced me to realize how precious life is definitely and how precious and fragile mental health is oh hell yeah and and so I just, you know, I, I, you, you, as I said earlier, like, I realized the things that I was giving away to people um, who never took the time to sit down and have a conversation with me about me and never gave me the opportunity to be in an unconditional loving space with them. I gave them too much power. And so I, 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 I was like, I can't do this Anymore, I just can't because I, I wanted to die at one point. Mm. And I 
kind of tried, you know? That's fair. And so, and then I didn't want to die. And then I was angry that, like you said, well, God must really hate me, right? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't choose these uh, struggles or challenges that I have to encounter in life. And, you know, I, I, um, uh, you know, I, I, I say that, this, the, the theme of this season of this this podcast is, is Dear Kilo. Uh, Kilo was um, the nickname my grandmother gave me as a as a as a, as a child, mm-hmm. and I felt like he died in so many ways, and and because he never had the opportunity to speak some of the things that he needed to say, and so um, when he died, all of the those things and the people that he cared about and the people that he let control and abuse him the power that they had that also died, you know? And so now I'm here and I don't give half the fuck that he used to about what, you know, you know, the things that, 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 that allowed him to not live fully. And so I'm living, I feel like I'm living 2.0, you know, now I killed (laughs) Mm 2.0. Yeah. Um, And so, you know, I'm growing into a totally different kind of, um, human experience and perhaps embracing uh, my humanity with love in a way that um, I wasn't taught to do. Mm-hmm. I didn't come from learning that. I had to grow into that because I I had to grow into that because it was either that or I would have been in a graveyard somewhere. Yeah, you, um, you know? takes time. Like I'm learning, I'm learning just to love everyone and love people for where they are. Like I do, I I am. Like you said, depression does take away and mm-hmm. it does give. Mm-hmm. And I can be extremely cynical. Mm-hmm. Like, I love humans. I love all of us. But I just know that we're jackasses. Right. And it makes me angry sometimes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, it like internal anger, too. It's like angry with yourself. It's like, why are you like this? <laughs> I continue to be fascinated by the beauty that emerges when someone like Denzel is able to open their heart and share what he has so candidly. I just hope that he can see that beauty in himself in a world that says it sees otherwise sometimes. We'll be right back after these messages. I knew I had to find a way to create this podcast as all creators know it can be a long process to bringing something that you love to life you ask yourself the question how can I fail how can I fail when I must do this for my soul to exhale late nights internal fights It all seems like a small price to pay. If I can go to sleep satisfied at the end of the day. And that's why I'm committed to leaving it all on the table. To making this podcast a reflection of everything I am able to give. Because I want to see this dream live. Now you can be a part of making that vision a reality by making a small monthly donation to help sustain the future of this podcast. Apple Podcast listeners can click details at the bottom of each episode to find the Become a Supporter of this podcast link or go directly to the support page at anchor.fm slash thepoetgod slash support. That's anchor.fm slash the poet god slash support. Thank you so much for empowering independent creators like me. When you when you when you realize that you are that person that you um are taught to hate and taught to mm-hmm. dislike, yep. like it turns into like self-hatred and yep. that shit's painful in it poisons you and tears you up on the inside yeah no matter what and that's part of the growth that i'm going through right now is like 
changing that conversation that goes on inside of your head. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's a really rough conversation. Changing that conversation in your heart, changing that conversation in your head is like mm-hmm. not like you got to learn to love yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's it's going to be a rough journey. It is a rough journey mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. It's it's rough. Oh no, I know. I feel like um, we share so much of that journey. I like I see so much of my self in you in that way uh and um i I understand it on such an intimate level Mm -hmm. you know the things that you're talking about i mean i nobody ever called me ugly but i grew up kind of feeling like that and looking in the mirror and just didn't see i didn't see anything in the mirror that i I got called pug face (laughs) (laughs) you know (laughs) So and I looked like a pug. Like and, I was cute and ugly at the same time. I was oh. like, damn. <laughs> but this, what I had to kind of learn is that I was never looking at myself when I was looking in the mirror. Mm-hmm. I was looking at how through the lens that other people had kind of, the filter that other people had given me, mm-hmm. the ones that they saw me through. And I looked at myself through them, not through my own eyes like yeah. i never gave myself that permission and it, it it took a long time for me to 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 have that experience with myself where i actually saw i didn't see myself for the first time until i was like 27 oh man you knew oh, you know man that's rough like that's um <laughs> kind of similar to what i'm going through right now it's just like you know teaching yourself that you're unattractive you're ugly you're not worthy yeah and having like a bunch of people come and say the exact opposite, like, you're really attractive. You're so handsome. Right. And I'm like, what? I don't even see that. And then I look in you the know? mirror sometimes, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. I do look good. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you, and, and yeah, so you're, you're having that moment where it's almost like the second half of the eclipse. Mm-hmm. You know, you're starting to see glimpses and visions of who you really are and less of the... Um, you know the the filters of what has been placed on you mm-hmm. by society, and so that's a beautiful thing. Like when I first had that happen, I just wanted to see more because I was like, "Well, who is that person? I don't know them, and I want to get to to know them." Yeah, and it's like you know? you know, fighting like like one. It's okay to be different. Like I'm, you know, I had my prom I was like I wear basically like a freaking punk golf metalhead. Right. You know, I listen to metal, kind of punkish and all that stuff. And, like, come to realize that's who I am as a person and being different isn't bad. And I should just embrace being different. My boss actually told me that. It's like, so you always been kind of different. It's like, eh, he's like, no, no, no. That's a good thing. Like, you've always tried to be different. Right. And I was like, wow. Yeah, you're kind of right. And, like, even my writing is different. Like, I, um, you know, I kind of go toe the line between that surreal kind of t- twilight zone right. stuff. Right. In my writing. And that's um, how I likes to be. Right. Yeah, I mean, and this is, you know, going back to what we kind of touched on earlier, this, what you're experiencing is your expression of your humanity. And that's what should be celebrated. And that's Mm -hmm. what should be welcome and and loved in all of its forms, you know? And so we shouldn't be uh, trying to stifle ourselves and put ourselves in boxes that for other people to feel comfortable you know, um, and, and, and I, I think, you know, people listening to this who have issues with, um, I mean, if somebody else's, whatever, what's somebody else's sexuality, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then maybe you need to question a few things about yourself. Because why are you uncomfortable? Yeah, man. I mean, and like. Why are you having issues with. Like, if they're causing no harm, man, you know, and and it's weird. You have to tell this on. You have to play in the middle ground because they can they can not like who you are they can not like your ideas and everything but they also gotta treat you like a human right like as long you can not like me you can not like whatever I stand for mm-hmm. but as long as we treat each other like humans mm-hmm. and we can you know understand our differences that's fine because it we can't all have the same ideals to grow as human beings right like we always we have to have the good we have to have the bad mm-hmm. like you know we have to have all that together to grow right so and you and you know at the, at the end of the day um you know we're all talking about human beings mm-hmm. none of these names these labels that we've said none of these stands for, for anything alien no these are all humans, people bro. who live on planet earth 
And as long as that's true, I think the only label really that matters is human, you know, mm-hmm. because that's the one label that we can all say, OK, yeah, that's that's that is probably most accurate mm-hmm. of any of them. Is that you are simply... You are simply human. You are simply human. <laughs> you're going to make mistakes. You will make mistakes. You um, get hurt and you're going to experience some really good stuff. But yeah. at the end of the day, you're only human. I lingered in your shadow, just over your shoulder. The mornings we met were early and cold. No shade... But I thought you were colder. And then I learned that depression was testing your soul. But I know you're a soldier. I know you think I am bold. But brother, you proved to be bolder. You revealed your crush like a proud black card holder. Now you're running up on me like, hey sexy, I told you. And I mistook your silence for shyness. I thought you were joking when you called me your highness. But uh, after all the things that we've been through, the truth is, I've been blessed by your kindness. I'm Akil Johnson, the poet god. Thank you for listening.